Hello. Welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason Newland. And I'm laying back in my big black squeaky chair, which becomes somewhat squeakier whenever I decide to make a quiet recording. So this is a let me bore you to sleep. I actually started to make a recording yesterday. I don't know what time it was, probably about 11 o'clock. And um, I thought, I know what I'll do. I'll tell a story, just make up a story about whatever. And I just started this story and I made myself laugh. But proper, proper laugh and I couldn't stop and I had to just abandon the whole thing. Which is a shame. <sighs> so, what's the latest in my life? So, what have I been doing? I've uh, been working on the website been working on the podcasts and also the YouTube channel. Uh, I also need to mention only listen to this or watch this video when you can safely close your eyes. La, la, la. So... That's it really, I mean, you'd think that like a general person, like a, you know, a member of the human race would know, <laughs> would kind of know not to listen to a sleep recording aimed at boring you to sleep when you know driving a car or uh, in charge of I don't know being in an air flight coordination centre coordinating all the different flight paths and that's not a good <laughs> a good time to be listening to some boring recording or if you're sitting in an office uh, watching CCTV cameras, you know, or watching the monitors. <sighs> I imagine that would be a mixture of being a really boring job and a really exciting job watching monitors and I suppose it would depend upon what the cameras were focusing on um, if it was just in an empty office block and the cameras would just faced on the desks 
or you know just generally or in the hallways or you know maybe in the lifts I don't know oh, by the way I'm in England where we call lifts lifts you call you may call them elevators is it elevators um Yeah, elevators. Yeah, we call them lifts. Mind you, I quite like the word elevate. It's a, a sense of progression, some kind of positivity, isn't it? Sort of, how do you feel after that, that meeting? How did it go? Oh, I feel elevated. You know, you go here, you said, I feel lifted. Well, lifted, yeah, I suppose that's quite... I feel like a lift. I feel like an... Yeah, I suppose it's both, isn't it? You get lifted up. Elevated up. But I don't know which came first. I don't know whether a lift was the... The first description or whether elevator. Because... Because, because... America may have been the first country to have installed a contraption which allowed people to travel um, up and down the building. But then I'm thinking, maybe not. Because, 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 because... I think about the mining. And how far back the mining industry used to be. You know, it's going back a long, long time. And they had lifts or elevators which would take the workers up and down the shafts. of the mine the miner's shaft would be up and down and I think sometimes there'd be um, before electricity I guess they would be operated by hand so there'd be I guess a kind of a pulley, a pulley system. I'm trying to get out of this um, conversation now. So maybe um, it's not that important where they came from, I suppose. But I see people on escalators. I wonder if. You know, moving stairs, really, aren't they? I wonder where that idea came from. The idea of... I someone one day was walking up some stairs and thought... I'm just not getting to the top of these stairs quick enough. And they invented the escalator. I think they used to be wooden. And I'm sure, and I might be wrong, I might be lying. And I do quite a lot when I do these. Um, but I'm pretty, pretty, pretty sure that even during my lifetime, when I was maybe a child or a young man, some of the escalators on the underground were made of wood. Now they're all metal. But I'm pretty sure some of them were made of wood. Uh, but I think they were originally. But again, I might that might not be true. 
it might completely not be true. I don't know if I'd get that frustrated at some stairs and the time it took to walk up the stairs that I would go to that length to invent moving stairs I mean, it's quite a, an amazing invention really I mean, personally I would say it's a good thing for people that can't walk upstairs when I was a young man because I used to be and in some of the tube stations not all of them I guess but there were some tube stations where you'd have the escalators on either side and then stairs which you could walk up in the middle or there'd be escalators on one side and stairs where you could walk up manually next to it quite often I would just walk up the stairs I'm not really sure why it's as if I was trying to prove a point which didn't exist it's a uh, you know, even some of the tube stations in London have, I, I guess I'm being specific, saying in London, but as far as I'm aware, there are no tube stations outside of London. Um, I know that different countries have their own versions of underground transportation so in France it's the metro I do believe in America it's the subway so I guess you get to travel and eat sandwiches at the same time I don't know if Canada have an underground system. I'm unaware if China do. I'm pretty sure China has an underground system. No, they do, definitely. I don't know what they call it. Maybe Japan does too. What other countries? Germany, I think they probably, I'm sure a lot of different countries in Europe possibly have underground train services. Germany, I mean, when I went to, not the end of all, Nev Nev the Netherlands, Nev Netherlands, I, no, Netherlands. I how did I get there I went by ferry so the idea was to go to Amsterdam that was the final destination of that particular trip and so I travelled by a train to Harwich this was yeah, I think this was in either October or November. I think it was October 2003. And it might be November. But I know it was cold. And 
I was wearing a hat and I had shaved my head for some reason so I was you know I needed to wear the hat in order to I guess keep the heat inside my scalp because what I noticed is when I shaved my head I felt colder when it was cold than I had done previously before I shaved my head and my hair was longer or I had hair now I don't know if the temperature was precisely the same when I had no hair to how it was before I shaved my head and I had hair so it is hard to really distinguish to give you know a correct reading of that particular uh, sensation compared to temperature but I don't recall if I was wearing a hat when I had hair, you know, before I shaved my head. And I know I mentioned, you know, when I had hair, but I do still have hair. I still have hair follicles. It's just sometimes they're very shortly trimmed. And You know, it's uh, at the moment I'm actually, um, you know, some people say I'm growing my hair long. Well, I'm not actually actively doing anything, the hair just grows on its own. I'm not growing it, it's not a hobby, you know. I'm not, um, I'm not talking to my hair in the hope that it grows quicker. There's, there's nothing really involved in it. It just kind of does its own thing. But I do notice there's, there's a definite recedation. Is that a proper word? Recedingness of my, the top, you know, the front of my hair. Uh, that's been, that's been happening since I think I first noticed it in my late twenties, probably around about twenty nine. So that would be uh, nineteen ninety nine, maybe two thousand. You know, it depends because. My birthday's the end of August, so I'm not, although it's 1999, I wasn't 29 until the end of August. So all the months before um, August in 1999, I was actually 28. Uh, for example, in January 1999, I was 28. In February 1999, I was 28 as well. As well as in March 1999, I was still 28. And as we move forward, in April 1999... I was 28 in May 1999 I was 28 and May was it June June 1999 I was 28 in July 1999 I was still 28. Now, this is where it gets interesting because in August, I was, it's August 1999, I was both 
28 and in August 1999 I was also as well as being 28 I was also 29 and you may think well how can how can um I need to have a drink. My voice is getting all croaky. You may think, how can you be 28 and 29 in the same month? Well, for most of the month of August 1999 I was 28 and then on my 29th birthday I you know, became 29 but I'm not sure the exact day when I noticed that my hair was receding uh, the, the front of my hair it might have been it's possible that I was looking in the mirror one day and I thought to myself oh I think I might be receding my hair but I don't recall what mirror it would have been in I do remember where I was living at that particular time, but there was, that's Andre, he's just woken up, he's gone and just run over to, he's do this piece of artwork, uh, so I've got some paper laid on the carpet and he's He's doing a little bit of artwork and he's every now and then he he adds a little bit more to the piece of art. He's gone back to add a bit more now. And uh I said to him, Andre, he said, Yes, Daddy. I said, uh what were you doing? He said, I'm doing some art. I decided to do some art. And I said, okay, so he said, it's going to be a painting. It's going to, you know, he said that he'd like me to, when he's finished, to actually take the newspaper off the floor um, and put it into a frame and just put a big name across it I said do you mean your name it, Andre he said well yeah but I'd like you to put the title of the piece of art I said okay well, what's, have you got a title for it he said yes I said oh, okay What's it called? He, he looked at me. Straight in the eyes. He licked his nose. And he said, Daddy, it's called the Dirty Protest. And I thought, oh, okay. And he... I was holding him at the time. He jumped off. He bit my ankle and he ran off giggling so it's quite a few yeah what what I've noticed with my hair is thinking back to that time I was talking about the mirrors now I don't know which mirror I saw my hair in 
that when I noticed that it was receding at the front because I had a mirror in the bedroom there was I think there was two mirrors in the bathroom there was the standard mirror on the right hand side as you went in Uh, in fact I think there might have been three mirrors so there's one on the right hand side there's one there was like a bathroom cabinet you know one of those little uh, things that stick to the wall they, they don't stick by themselves they're not like half octopus not that an octopus would stick to the wall but just you know they're not they're not born with sticky back backs um, not that bathroom cabinets are born but you know I think you have to attach them with screws and bolts and stuff anyway this this little bathroom cabinet um, see I don't remember if it was a slide indoors or whether it opened outwards but it had mirrors on both sides but it was also and that was again on the right hand side I think what well, might have been ah I think it might have been behind the door anyway there was another mirror it was one of those standy up mirrors uh, I suppose something that maybe you could do makeup in or pluck your eyebrows or I don't know this or looking I guess it's, it's it's a thing to look into isn't it I guess what you decide to do whilst looking at your own reflection really is between you and yourself it's, it's I guess it's not really that valid for this particular uh, conversation topic but this mirror there was two sides to it it was a very philosophical mirror and the first side or the second side it depends which way you looked at it I guess um, I guess really the person that bought the mirror would be the one to decide which one was the first and which one was the second or which one was the front and which one was the back of the mirror you know but so let's say the front of it was just like a normal mirror but shaped in the way that it was shaped kind of like a I suppose like a an egg but with a longer body or I suppose more like a a, a pear but with a a thicker head I suppose so it's you know a nice plump bottom but at the same time a nice kind of plump middle bit and I guess a little bit smaller at the top but not by much so I'm not trying to I can't think what kind of fruit really would suit that probably some kind of uh, potato if you, you could find one that would be that kind of shape because that's one of the wonderful things about potatoes is they do come in all, all types of shapes um, or plus you can eat them and they can keep you alive but the shape bit is also really important they come in lots of different shapes it's like a a food and a toy all at the same time 
so this mirror, it was like a normal, what is normal? I mean, I don't, I'm very sensitive. I don't like to generalize when it comes to mirrors. I don't like just to call a mirror normal, you know. What about the mirrors that maybe have self-esteem issues? Or just like, well, you're normal, I'm I'm normal, and what is normal, you know. Anyway, this mirror. If you turn it round, and it had this little swivel thing, so you didn't actually, it's really clever, you didn't actually have to pick it up and physically turn it round you could just flip it you could push down and kind of forward at the same time at the top of the mirror and it would turn round turn over so you could see the back side of the mirror or alternatively you could push on the bottom of it and then that would you know kind of halfway push it through and then you could then push your hand raise your hand and push down on the the bottom the top and pushing it down so that it flipped round so that you could see the other side of the mirror and here's where it gets interesting the other side of the mirror was really magnified. A little bit scary to start with. You know, the last thing I want to do when I look in a mirror is think that my nose has grown even bigger. But it was luckily it was just the uh, the extra magnification. And. I mean, I don't really, I don't, well, I don't really, I, I don't wear makeup. I just, I know some people do. And I know some men do. I don't know any men that do. And I don't know any men that would probably admit that they do. But some men do wear makeup because makeup for men is sold it's uh, I just I don't know what I'd do with it if I had makeup and then what would I put blusher on lipstick and there's been moments in the past times not recently but in the past and um, where I've been asked, am I wearing lipstick? Which I always find to be quite an unusual question. Because if I was wearing lipstick, that could potentially be uh, a question that I didn't want to be asked possibly but I have never well I have worn lipstick but not when I've been out and uh, well yeah well, I was out not out out as in um, uh, would, when I was at school I was in drama I had a drama class and I used to dress up every opportunity I would dress up as a woman and wear women's clothes high heels and as much lipstick and as much makeup as I could possibly get onto my face because I don't know why really. I've never really given it much thought. 
but it was fun. I think it was just the fun, the fun aspect of it. You know, I don't, I didn't want to be a professional woman. I think it's the same as if I used to quite like roller skating. But I never wanted to be in the Olympics. You know, so... We used to have a roller, roller skating rink in the town that I used to live when I was a young boy. And it was one of my favourite places to go. It really was. And it was this... I mean, at the time, it seemed like a big place. And it was outdoors... But there was a cabin, in, you know, where you could get your skates. It wasn't what, like one of those roller worlds, massive places. It was just a little square um, outside thing, flat surface, which you could skate on. And, uh, you know, there was a fence, which you, you know, surrounding each bit, so you didn't end up in the field or in someone's garden. But this, they used to play music as well and I loved it there. It was really one of my favouritest things when I was young to do. Absolutely loved it. And with the skates, you know when you go bowling, and I've only really been bowling, I think, once, I think, maybe twice, but I think once. And the thing that kind of made me decide that maybe bowling is possibly not really the thing for me is the wearing of shoes that other people have also worn. I know it's not the same as reusing toilet paper. I know it's, it's a different thing, but I just, just felt wrong and I didn't really understand wh why. I didn't really understand why. Uh, if they had a rule, you know, no high heels. I mean, did people used to walk in with hockey shoes on, with ice skaters on, you know, or what did they climb in, you know, with big spikes on there? Who used to walk in with elephants, riding on elephants? I mean, so they care about their floor. Fair enough, you know. We all need to, I guess we all care about something in our lives. Bowling alleys care about their floors. And fair enough. But if they had perhaps a, a footwear rule so that, you know, soft shoes only would be, you know, if you come in, you need to wear soft, soft shoes only. And that, but then, they're making money, aren't they, from getting people to wear shoes. I think they charge. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they did. So, yeah. I wonder whether or not you can take your own shoes in. And say, hey, look. And just wave them around. Well, not to everybody. Because, well, some people, they're busy. They, you distract them from their game. You know, hey, look at my shoes, everybody. Ooh. I mean, some people might be there on a date.
I don't know, what, what would be the point in... Is it a good thing to do on a first date? I suppose even if it goes goes really bad, if it's like a really, really terrible day, at least you can say, well, at least you touched me balls. Boom, boom, boom. You know, the balls that you chuck, not, not the... So I used to love skating. I wasn't necessarily particularly good at it, but I used to enjoy it. And I had the same kind of rule with skating as I do, well I say do, but always have done, with swimming pools. And that is to stay to the side always always be near the edge I'm always near the edge in life always need something to hold on to need something to grab hold of so that's what I do when I swim I stay near the edge when I was uh, skating I would circle around but I would always be near the edge so if I needed to stop, I would grab hold of something and, you know, the edge, the, the fence or whatever, the gate or whatever it was. And I find that's a good way to... I'm still a bit like that. I quite like to be near the edge. It's nice to have something to grab hold of. And even now, when I walk up and downstairs uh, I've still got a tendency of if not holding on to the banister or the rail I'll put my hand on top I kind of sometimes feel like I'm patting it just acknowledging it so there, 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 there like a little donkey but there's something about that security of and safety of knowing it's there because it's there for safety and I think sometimes it's nice to just acknowledge it and even if you don't say it out loud you sort of you know, have a little thank you thanks for being there thanks for thinking of me I love you and see I don't go into lifts or elevators unless I need to if I can use the stairs I'll use the stairs although there have been times when I have used lifts for example when going to the top of a building like a you know really high tall building also I find that if you're going or for me if I'm going somewhere new if I'm in a building for the first time uh, let's say going for a job interview or just meeting somebody and all I have is the name of the company and then I'll walk into a building and there's like 20 or 30 different companies sometimes I find it is easier to just then get into the lift and go to the floor of that particular company and even though there may be more than one company on that floor at least I then have a better chance 
of finding the company that I am visiting because then I know I'm in the right place and it just there's less things to do there's less things to look for because let's say for example I'm visiting I don't know uh <sighs> Maybe it's a, it's a company that sells uh, old pictures of, you know, action man, uh, you know, and you can go in there and uh, you can get yourself dressed up as, you know, various children's toys, uh, action man, smurf costumes, uh, Winnie the Pooh, um, Barbie, uh, you know, there were various different children's toys from the past and the present as well, uh, you know, Teletubbies. So you can go in, get dressed up in whatever costume you choose, and then they take a picture of you. I, mean, I like Action Man, of course. And uh, although you can't tell, but I do have real, you know, realistic grip fingers. Uh, and uh, I used to have an action man which had hawk eyes, where at the back of the head you could move the eyes from right to left, or left to right, whichever way. I mean, you have the choice of either. That was great. Because the good thing about that is he didn't have to keep turning his head. He could keep his head straight all the time and just move his eyes. That way from a distance, people wouldn't necessarily know where he was looking. Because when he moved his head, people could see from a distance he's looking to the right. Or if he looked to the... That was if he was looking to the right. But if he moved his head to the left, people from a distance could see that he was looking to the left. But when he was just looking straight forward, people from a distance would assume that he's just looking straight ahead. But with these eagle eyes, being able to move from right to left meant that he could give the impression of looking straight ahead and the people from a distance would think oh he's just looking straight ahead but he could be looking to the right or they might think he's looking straight ahead and he could be looking to the left without moving his head one inch or even two or to make things more confusing for those people from a distance that don't realise quite what's going on he might move his head to the left and they think oh he's looking to the left but actually with the hawk eyes you could move the eyes so he's looking to the right which would kind of be straight on had he still had his head facing straight on like it was before but to make it even more exciting he could have his head turned to left and then have his eyes even further to the left so he could be practically looking behind himself kind of so if there was a, a tractor or a spaceship or a kangaroo, he'd be able to see it. And the same as if he was looking straight ahead and then turned to the right, turned his head to the right, the people from a distance 
would just assume that he's looking to the right. But he might do, he might be looking to the right. But he might turn his eyes, his hawk eyes to the left and he can be looking at the person that he would have been looking at had he just stayed looking forward. So the person from a distance won't realise that he's still looking at them. Or he might turn his eyes to the right and look behind to see if the kangaroo's still there. Because his lunchbox is just behind him and he's got some special cookies that he made and he doesn't want the kangaroo taking them again. So I like to dress up as a I'm just saying if if that was the situation and I was trying to get to that uh, a business like that then you know I would get the the lift rather than the stairs um, if I was for example going to go to a business that allowed me to dress up as an adult as uh, cartoon characters and uh, toy figures although admittedly uh, a lot of those businesses aren't usually too high up in buildings uh, usually more basement level It's been a while since I've been to Soho. I used to go there a lot when I was younger because that whole area is where a lot of really good book stores used to be. So I used to get on the train tube underground um, at Stratford. And then, I'm trying to think how many stops there were. So I'd get off at Tottenham Court Road, tube station. And this was on the central line. So, what would it be? Uh, so from Stratford, Mile End, Bethnal Green, Liverpool Street, this is where I get a bit phasey. Um, so Tottenham Court Road, Oxford S Circus is after that, I think. Um, so there's a few. There's just a few stops. I think it's about five or six stops between Stratford and Tottenham Court Road. So it's not long. I get off at Tottenham Court Road. I walk off the tube. And there's various different routes to get out of the tube station, you know. This, uh, and it's probably changed quite a lot since I've been there. So I used to, my, my most popular exit used to be the exit that came out just on the corner and it was opposite McDonald's and I'd come out of there and I would normally turn right into, I don't know what road it was Charing Cross Road, possibly and there was lots of bookshops some of them are gone now, some of them have changed over, to, you know, been bought out or whatever. Uh, and I'll talk about that in a future session probably. But yeah, I used to like that, I used to like to walk down there, browse the bookshops, 
Foils was one bookshop, which was a really famous one. Um, Blackwells, um, books, etc. I don't think that's even around anymore. Waterstones, uh, what other ones were there? I forget. But I used to love buying, you know, various different types of books beat poetry, Buddhist books, hypnosis books, uh, just kind of whatever I was into at the time, really. And it used to be one of my favourite things to go and buy a book or two. Go to McDonald's and then just get the tube back and have a little look at my books on the way back and look forward to getting home so I could read them. One of my little favourite little things. Sometimes I'd go down to Soho. So I'd walk down, turn right, walk down, um, I forget the name of the road. What's the road called? Uh, I forget. Anyway, it's kind of like a, a through road, if that makes any sense. It's, it's busy, but it's not like a busy road road. It's more busy pedestrian wise. And I used to go down there, and in the middle of Soho, there used to be a record store that I used to go to. And I used to buy, it's more for the videos, I used to buy stand-up comedians' videos. So I used to buy lots of stuff from there over the years. And... Uh, Yeah, then I come back. Oh, there was another record store as well, just through Soho on the other side. There was, I forget what it was called, but they also used to have videos and DVDs and stuff like that. So I used to go in there and sometimes buy stuff as well. And there was another shop, again through Soho, but on the right which used to sell posters and books and quite, you know, far, far, not far out stuff, but just sort of collectible, uh, interesting stuff. So yeah, I used to go in there. What else did I used to do? I used to travel home. I did, I used to get on the tube, go back. I used to walk back, so I'd come out the same entrance every time, really. And just follow it around, which led to the traffic lights. I could go across or I could turn left, which was more of a shortcut. So I took the left bit and walked around there. And there was this furniture shop on the left. So I just turned left and that would lead to, yeah, a couple of pubs, a few little pubs and like a, off license and there was a happy shopper I think and that was in Maryland station the other side of the road that's Maryland train station which was the stop in between Forest Gate and Stratford overground and that led to like Rumford and places like that Harold Wood so I used to turn left walk down 
I think it was Leighton High Road or Leighton Stone High Road. Walk all the way down and then turn right when I got to near the thatched house and walk all the way down to, I always kind of lived in that area generally. And you just walk home. Maybe buy some milk from the shop on the way there. Then I go home. Watch some telly. Get me books out. I always like the smell of books. You know, the the smell of the fresh print. Even though it wasn't really fresh. Because it might have been years old. But it's still kind of un untouched or unsmelt it's quite nice so that's me done for another day I hope uh, I wasn't too interesting in some of the stuff I said and please remember to share by supporting me by sharing this with people Subscribe on YouTube if you haven't already. Blah, 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 blah. Bye.